Greetings, Richard Nikolai here. I've got <laughs> there, to, but you see my screen, which in turn, I've got two screens. So I'm, it's just a, a linked up here. Um, I can do these. I've got some stuff just to, just just for fun. Um, like it, you don't. Know, but anyway, I've got like uh, four tabs here. And um, the one, this one is called The Great Awakening as a global phenomenon. It's a, it's a PDF. It's kind of a study. It's about 20 pages. It's got some interesting graphs um, scrolling down. That's kind of cool. You can pause your video. So this is like a kind of a washout thing here where they just take a bunch of terms and they, and they can compare it. It's, it's looking at what, what's in the media, right? How frequently these different words are used and it's all over the map. You can see, right? And you go down here. So these are national news media in different countries for work growth, like racism, frequency of racism, racist, sexism, sexist, homophobe, homophobic, transphobia, transphobic, Islamophobia, Islamophobic, antisemitism, anti-Semitic. So you see every single country and the United States leads it. This starts in about 2010. Each graph here starts in about 2010. And you just see every place, everybody is on the same woke narrative. Every single place. Boom, 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 boom. Up, up, up. Right? Interestingly, then, if you go down here, if you go down here, um, yearly, pre uh, yearly average yearly prevalence of words denouncing different prejudice types like we just talked about, you know, the wokeness. And, um, uh, and you see that um, uh, English speaking West is, you know, what we're concerned of. This is very high on all the racism stuff up here. And if you look here, what's interesting, I live in Asia, Asia are conservative cultures. I've been saying this. They don't give they they don't and and Russia is uh, is Eurasian part of it's in West in Eastern Europe part of it's in Asia, right? So uh, and then so you down here the least prevalence is amongst the Asians, right? So there you go. So the, it's the woke West really. What you should, what, 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 how you ought to be looking at that? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'll I'm going to like cover three, four tabs in each time I do these and I'll just, I'll pop the links in so you can look yourself. So I'm just, I'm just brief summary. Da, da, da. Okay. Another, I got into a deal today, I, you know, gold bugs deal. I, I'm fine. A uh, 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 gold standard is fine, but some of these people think it's magic, right? It's magic to, uh, to have a gold standard and, and young people think, Oh, if you have a gold standard, there's no inflation, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> grasshopper. Okay, so I just I called this up. What's the value of a hundred bucks in 1900? And today it's a hundred bucks is equivalent of three thousand five hundred. All right. So, but here's the thing. So we had actually we had a gold standard. The the gold standard act was in 1900. All right, and it ended in 1971, 72, 1971, 72. Right. Okay, so you look at here U.S. inflation, annual inflation, right? Highest was 1916 to 1920, upwards of uh, 18% in 1918, right? Okay, now, um, and, the, and so this area here was all under gold standard. This area, 1971 being around here. So this area here is all in, you know, uh, full faith and credit. So you got gold standard, which is it's 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 gold. Gold is what determines your money supply. And in full faith and credit, it's fiat. So the government just says, OK, uh, we'll we'll cover you. We're going to print what we want, but we'll cover you. Right. So I agree that over time, gold, a gold standard uh, will supposedly kind of put a tamper on the money supply. But if you think that the that the government just can't print money and inflate just because of a gold standard, you're smoking dope. Okay, buying power of a hundred bucks 
uh, from 1900 to you know to that to now. So gold standard is is right here. So it did it did stay pretty good. I mean, it's it went from what a hundred bucks in 1900, and at the time of the gold standard, 71, it was 500 bucks. Okay, so it lost it. It was cut in the fifth during that time, and of course, it's much worse now. So that, there's an argument for gold standard is better. It's still not perfect. You still you still have inflation. You still lose your money. Now the, the other interesting one is buying power. Um, of that hundred bucks, you know, there. And what's interesting is you see the deepest um, uh, degradation of that up to 1971, right? How can that be? Um, uh, but what, what that is, is technology. It's technology and economies of scale and the business efficiencies and, and complex global trade and supply chains and all that. Right. So that's that's why it's stable. In other words, another way to look at it is thank God for technology and advancements and all of this stuff, because it kind of it, it makes up for all the, the, the bullshit the governments do in printing money, printing money, printing money. You can print money uh, if you you know, and it doesn't have to be backed by gold, but it has to be backed by something. So we 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 back it by production, gross, gross product. How, how productive we are. Okay. All right. <clears throat> the, I was already there. Okay. Do, 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 the global great. Awakening. I'd already covered this, the great awakening. All right. The, um, the uh, other one that's worth looking at here is this Twitter thing today. Now you can see the video. It'll play a couple of times. So there's this guy running down the street. He puts the sound on here. Photo him. Photo, photo, photo. They're chasing him, photoing him. He's running. Da, da, da. And then, look. <laughs> kills him. I don't know if he killed himself. I looked for a news story. But he dives under a van. So, the guy right there, pedophile hunters, this is obviously in the UK, uh, chasing a man who is allegedly attempting, allegedly attempting. So you have two, he's, they're, saying he, uh, they're saying he was attempting to meet underage children or underage child. Okay, let's stop that. All right, so allegedly attempting. And so I'm like, okay, well, you know, and he threw himself under the bus. I mean, literally, you know, under the bus. Um, uh, but I, so I look and I'm like, whoa. And it's like, there's dozens, if not, yeah, dozens, if not a couple hundred. You scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. I, it just goes on and on and on. I did not see one comment saying, oh, wait a second, you know, uh, is there a news story? Is there a, is there any evidence? It's hearsay. It's hearsay by the guy, you know, allegedly attempt. And plus, is it a crime to attempt to meet? Is, is, is there a crime there? Right. But everyone is, I mean, it's just like, it's over the top. And this is where, this is where the religious right just makes themselves look like fucking idiots. And that's why they have so much problem. Whenever they start to gain some momentum, they do stupid shit like this, right? Um, you, you, you ought to, it doesn't matter. You can hate pedophiles. You can hate pedophilia. I agree. Of course, my line is puberty between pedophilia and not pedophilia. Also, the age of consent in Japan First world economic country, age of consent in Japan is 13 years old. In other words, it corresponds with nature, sexual maturity in nature. So, yeah, if if the if the person is not puberty sexually mature yet, yeah, that's weird, right? Should society punish it? Um, uh, probably, yeah. Uh, 
and that's a, a decision society makes. But the thing is, is that it is, there's a certain amount of arbitrary. This is a map of the United States. Now, green is age of, age of consent laws. So green is 18 years old. Brown is 17 years old. Blue is 16 years old. So in the United States, you have 16, 17, and 18. So conceivably, according to some people, because they conflate the law with morality. So if you are, if you, you're in one state and age of consent is 16, right? You're A-OK, -okay, but you go to another state and she's 16 and you're a pedophile, right? Does that make sense? Right. Okay. So, right. and I suppose if you're in one state, if you're in an 18 year old state, you're with a 16 year old, but it neighbors. So let's say Texas is 18. And then Oklahoma here is, uh, is, um, is 16, right? So you're in Texas and you're with a 16 year old and you're a pedophile you transfer, you go to Oklahoma. Now it's federal, I think federal kidnapping if you cross state lines, right? I'm not sure about that, right? But in Oklahoma, there's no crime, <laughs> right? Okay, so then back to this thing. So I asked the question, I said, you know, <laughs> well, is there a crime? Is there, I looked, I searched Google, I searched Bing for a news article on this, just see if there's any facts, right? <clears throat> I said, mm -hmm. I searched several sources, but I can't find any news story about this. <clears throat> it could be too new. What I see in the video is not any evidence of a crime. This guy running down the street jumps in front of a thing. There's people yelling, filming, filming, filming. They don't even say pedophile, right? It's the, uh, it's the, it's the guy who posts it, right? The OP original post is merely hearsay. Moreover, is attempting to meet a crime. <clears throat> and if there was a meeting, is that alone a crime? Nonetheless, there certainly appears to have been a unanimous or near unanimous Twitter conviction, <clears throat> along with a sentencing death penalty, because everybody's cheering it. I mean, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, it's such cheer. It's lynch mob mentality, right? For what, or what that's worth, dozens, dozens, perhaps hundreds of votes to convict. This bumps up against my rule number one. When everybody is saying the same thing, everybody is wrong. Rule number two, when half of everybody is saying one thing and the other half is saying the exact opposite thing, both halves are wrong. Right. So, of course, this and this is great for engagement. Uh, and this is where you have to have thick skin and not care. So that brings out the woodwork. What the fuck you saying? You know, you're an idiot. And then they go to my blog. Oh, he lives in he lives in Thailand. <laughs> lady boys, lady boys. You know, and even like threats. You know, like you better keep away from my daughters. You know, all that shit. I mean, they're just idiots, right? But it's good for engagement because I've got. Here's the thing: is other people who don't say anything look and say, hey. He's right. I want to follow this guy. Boom. So you've got all these idiots that think they're making a point and they, and they, you know, like, uh, uh. and in the meantime, I get a dozen new followers and maybe a couple of subscriptions to my newsletter on my blog. Who knows? Maybe a, a few end up with a few uh, um, paid subscribers out of it. Right. But you got it. You, you got to have a thick skin. So you go in there and look at it and say, okay, it's working. You look at it the bright side. Okay. It's working. Right? Don't worry about it. I mean, there are a bunch of there are a bunch of jerk offs on the internet. Right? Okay, that's about all. But I'll put the I'll put the links in the description and keep these short. Do this every once in a while when I just get bored. Say let's clear out some tabs and uh, let me know if you like it. And also, do you like the? Uh, would you rather have the me not have me on the screen <laughs> up up top or or there at the bottom? Let me know if you care to comment, right? Or I could put it in the middle or something like that. Or like I say, just uh, get rid of it all together. Boom, like that. God, okay? All right. So, ah, uh, there you go. Okay, see you next time.